There it is. Hi there, Leanne from the Vermilion District Chamber of Commerce. For this uh, Town of Vermilion Councillor Candidate interview, we will be interviewing Brad Gallimore. And just a reminder that all candidates have been asked the same questions in the same order and nobody had any previous knowledge of the questions. And also just a reminder that to get out and vote on October 18th. So Brad, I will hand it over to you if you just want to kind of tell us who you are and why you decided to run. Cool. Uh, before I get started, a big shout out to Leanne for doing this on her own time, as well as it is October 4th, so I do want to recognize that today is MMIW Honoring and Remembering Day, and also recognize that I am on Treaty 6. Uh, Treaty 6 in 1876 was signed by Blackfoot, Cree, and nearby Métis settlements, including over 150 nations, and I recognize that while I'm on this land that we must honor truth and reconciliation. So a bit about myself. Um, my name is Brad Gallimore, as mentioned. Um, <laughs> I am a life coach who works almost exclusively with underprivileged youth coming out of the juvenile and the group home systems. And the main reason I'm running is when there was some blatantly racist signs posted uh, here in Vermilion, uh, I found that there was almost no action, no reaction. Uh, people weren't willing to do things and I wanted to be a part of the process that actually made the decision so something could be done about that so that those harmed by it would no longer be harmed by things like that. And that's, that's my whole spiel. Okay, well, then we will just get right into the questions. So uh, how long have you lived in the community and how are you involved in the community? Uh, so I've lived in the, the community for two years and the way I'm involved is I started and am co-founder of a local not-for-profit organization, as well as I do regular clothing and food drives uh, for unhoused community members, both here and in Lloydminster. And I also uh, do, I mean, as many events as I possibly can. I helped out with Void Fest. I co-organized the multicultural festival that happened in Vermilion on the weekend of September 25th and 26th. And basically any way I can get involved in the community. Uh, I regularly do food bank drives. I've helped with hearts and hands on a regular basis. And I mean, if you name an event, I've probably helped out. I even help out at the library. I'm a part of the library board of directors. I helped with their book sale. Not much, and admittedly, I did the heavy lifting, not the selling, but uh, everybody has a purpose when it comes to the library. So, and and just any way I can get involved, I've, I've been doing so, as well as promoting the farmer's market here in town. Okay, perfect. Um, being that expenses and the cost of living have increased, as a future counselor, would you agree taxes are too high in Vermilion? And if so, how would you propose to lower, or at the very least, to hold them the same over the next few years? Uh, so one of the ways is just, you know, making uh, amendments to the way we spend taxes. Um, if we spend our money properly, we don't need to raise taxes. We can keep it where it is or even lower it as long as we're spending in the right places. We have done some overspending on things, including our recent website. And I just think that there is a way to keep taxes where they are and as actually lower the cost of living if we can make this town more uh, ex uh, accepting and invitable to other people. Vermilion is a beautiful town and is flourishing so nicely. Um, this writer's concern is with the trailer park area. There are many young families that live in that area, but the roads are still gravel and no sidewalks, but yet the taxes are high. Theirs, for instance, are almost $1,700 per year. During winter months, there are no street cleaning that happens, and in the summer months, the roadways get wet and muddy from the substance the town uses and the rain. Residents know their taxes will increase if paving does happen, but it might be worth finding out if that is possible. Would you advocate for change in this area? It would be nice to see this area cleaned up where families can teach their kids how to ride a bike or learn to skateboard. Uh, absolutely, and I still think that uh, by allocating funds in the right way that we can still keep taxes the same and improve that area. And improving an area like that is only good for our economy when you have children who can learn, um, uh, not only just social skills, but just learning in general by hanging out with other kids. When you have an area that's accessible and you can have a playground and places where you're not falling into a mud pit, uh, your children are going to do better. And that's only better for the betterment of our uh, town in the future is if the betterment of the children and those uh, living in not necessarily the richer areas of town, then we can improve our town just through doing that is you bring um, the necessities to learning to children 
and your town becomes better in the future. And it's that's proven time and time again. Uh, why are we as pay taxpayers paying for an economic development department that attracts competitors, such as restaurants, that may put out pre exist that may put pre existing businesses out of town? What new businesses do you think would be a positive addition to our town? Uh, so one of my main things on my campaign platform is actually attracting indigenous owned businesses and indigenous people to this town to spend their money because we have plenty of indigenous communities around that uh, may not feel as accepted or as invited into this town. So not only could we invite business owners that would provide diversity uh, of people, but diversity of business, we would also attract the nearby communities to boost our economy and not have to invite in these competitors or these big businesses. Uh, unless you are a World War II vet, COVID is by far the largest crisis of our lifetime. Such crises require steadfast and strong response to minimize damages. While Vermilion has been very lucky so far to have avoided a COVID catastrophe, the province as a whole has not. While other municipalities have actively responded to the COVID crisis with strong safety measures and messaging, the town of Vermilion, in contrast, has not been a strong promoter of COVID safety information or safety measures. Rather, the number of mental health posts on the town Facebook page are dozens of times more frequent than the safety information for the pandemic. COVID is a crisis of community, which needs the leaders to lead the community, but that didn't happen. Would you have responded any differently to the COVID crisis had you been on town council? And specifically, what will you do differently now if elected? Um, I can't say I would have responded differently. It's impossible to say how anybody would have responded to something, especially at the beginning when we weren't 100% sure or we were. And let's face it, rules have changed. We're not even 100% sure what they are now. Um, on town council, I do believe I would promote getting vaccinated. I do believe in choice. I do believe businesses have the choice to restrict people from entering their business based on what they want. Uh, I just think that uh, promoting vaccination and promoting the, the idea of protecting others by wearing your mask inside and having businesses enforce the mask rule just to keep other people safe in any way you can. If it's 0.17% better, that's 0.17% better. Anything you can do to protect your community members. There are people in this community who have not been able to leave their house for a year and a half out of not just fear, but they just can't. If they get a cold, they could be at serious risk. Getting something like COVID could put them at way, way, way more dangerous situations. So it's it's all about caring about not just the, the people in this community who are thriving, but our most vulnerable. And we have to worry about our most vulnerable because if we don't care, care about our most vulnerable, then we don't really care about our community members and we should care about all community members. So protecting our most vulnerable should be number one. And as town councilor, I would promote vaccinations, I would promote masks, and I would promote protecting others from the dangers of COVID. What do you think of the current road cleaning services like snow plowing and street sweeping? What would you do to improve it? I mean, this is Alberta. You could improve, you could improve any street sweeping. You could complain about street sweeping. We have 17 different seasons, 16 of them are winter. So it's very hard to keep up with those types of things. Again, I do think we could be on top of that with reallocation of funds. Um, there have been some discrepancies in where we are spending as well as losing a lot of uh, provincial funding for our policing and maybe moving those funds in a different way rather than trying to uh, increase certain aspects that we don't necessarily need as much. So we could actually increase street sweeping, we can increase snow plowing, especially in the trailer park area uh, by just reallocating funds and making sure we're not overspending on things we don't need as much. If you received a $1 million grant, no strings attached, to use for the town any way you wanted, what would you do with it and why? Um, I would set up both mental health and drug addiction resources. Um, I believe a large part of crime comes from those things. And if we improve those, then we would not only reduce crime, but we would reduce the need for policing which would actually really help with our provincial funding being cut for some of our policing um, by increasing those uh, resources for mental health, for drug addiction, for drug recovery, then you reduce crime. And that has been proven again in other countries, in Canada itself, in both Vancouver and Ontario. And I believe that with a million dollars of no strings attached, you could have recovery houses, more than one uh, for at least three years. You could have mental health resources, you could have uh, 
things that help with incarceration. So instead of sending people to jail where they either reoffend or become hard, more hardened criminals, you have re rehabilitation services instead. And if you spend money on that, then we would not only reduce the rural crime, but the crime here in Vermilion. And uh, the last question is, what is the number one thing that you wish to accomplish in your four years as counselor? Uh, number one, again, would be attracting Indigenous owned businesses and Indigenous people from the surrounding communities into our town. A lot of people go to shop in Lloydminster or Vermilion, or uh, sorry, in Wainwright or in Edmonton when they could be coming here. And if we made this town more accepting and inviting to Indigenous peoples, we would not only boost our economy, but we would help them boost their economies. Okay. So that's the end of our questions. I want to thank you, Brad. And now I'll just give you uh, a few minutes to say anything that you thought was really important that uh, didn't get covered. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I just want to say that I know there was a lot of controversy for when my group started over a year ago. Um, I have changed. I've made things different. I try not to be as reactionary as I was. Um, for everybody who says that I... Uh, was too reactionary or said things that were inappropriate. I assure you the things that were said to me were tenfold and in a lot more uh, capacity because there was just more of them than there was of me. Uh, we have grown as a group. We are a local nonprofit who runs a street team that hands out uh, food, water, warm clothing to unhoused individuals in Lloydminster. And we are really, really striving to be better and do better, as well as we just did that Vermilion Multicultural Festival, and we are really striving to be an example of what it means to be anti-racist. Okay, thank you for your time tonight, Brad. Thank you.